You're listening to Capital Extra Breakfast. It's Robert Bruce and Shayna Marie making you sure you start your morning with nothing but good vibes. And we are joined by a man who's worked with the likes of Jamie Foxx, Fabulous, Rihanna, 50 Cent, Carrie Hilson. Jeez, three time Grammy winner, three time Grammy winner, eight albums underneath his belt. He's wrote for Mario, who songs like Let Me Love You, as well as Beyonce's Irreplaceable. You might know him better by his nickname, The Gentleman. It's Neo, everybody. Yeah. yeah. That was a hell of an introduction. Jeez. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank cool. you. You know what? That made it happen. <laughs> Just, I dig it. Yeah. I dig it. I feel all special now. Okay, cool. You are special. Uh, welcome <laughs> to Capital Extra. Thank How you. are you this morning? How I am fan damn Yes. Yeah? Feel great. Are Got you not three hours of sleep, which is a lot for me. Yes, I'm in a good space. Three hours sleep is a lot of sleep for you. It's a lot of sleep for me, yeah. Unless I'm on an airplane. That's where I, that's where I catch up on my sleep at. So the flight from America to here... Priceless. Love it. <laughs> Fun fact that you never knew about Neo. There you go. Very true. Yes. I remember the first time I went to Australia, it's like a 22-hour flight. They said they we had to put a mirror under your nose to make sure that you were still breathing oh because you God. didn't move for 22 <laughs> hours. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's how it works. Oh how it works. What is it about the aeroplane? I don't know. Well, no. you're going to be getting on the flight because you've just announced you're coming to the UK. Yeah, yeah. March Champagne and Roses tour with Mario as well. Yes, indeed. Yes, what indeed. can we expect, man? How are you feeling? Uh, I feel good, man. So Champagne and Roses tour was an absolute success in the States, and uh, I expect nothing less here uh, because my UK fans rock. Uh, me and Mario, and we're just basically bringing back uh, love, romance, you know, vulnerability, masculine vulnerability. You remember mm. when it was cool for a man mm. to express how much he loved a woman and, and it was wasn't corny. It's like nowadays the guys and the women are calling you corny for it. Damn! What, what the hell? What happened? What happened? No. So we're so we're bringing it back in a, in a very cool, very masculine way, and uh, it's, it's a quality show. If I do say so myself, I might be a little biased because it's me, but <laughs> it is a quality show, and you should definitely bring your significant other or at least that person that you are willing to be seen in public with. Yeah, yes. serious. Because then contact bring them with you. Pack out. Bring them um, with you. You. <laughs> You just done the tour in the US as a success, like you said. Yes, yes. Coming to the UK, you've been on tours before. You've done this for many years. Do you still get nervous when it oh, comes to going yeah. on tours? When it comes to announcing tours? When it comes to stepping on stage again? Do you still get nervous? Absolutely, absolutely. Every single time, I told myself that if I ever don't get nervous, that's when it's time to quit because I don't care anymore. Uh, ah, yeah. you, know, you get nervous because you want to do well. Of course, you want the tour to do well. You want to get on stage and, and do your best. You want people to enjoy. And yeah, that's that's a little nerve wracking sometimes. So yeah, I get nervous. Every time, every single time. What do you do to, like, combat the nervousness? Like, you're about to go on stage, first song, curtains up, everyone's going crazy. What do you do to be like, okay, it's fine. It's um, I bounce around like a boxer until it's time to get on stage. That's it. <laughs> Literally, like, it's, just, it's just a bounce that I do, and it's to, to calm the butterflies down. That's uh -huh. what happens, you know. I call them butterflies. It's normally gas and stuff like that. <laughs> just don't stand behind you gotta me release that as well, before so the you show. <laughs> You might get an unpleasant surprise. <laughs> We've grown up with your music, Neo. We're not going to lie. Legendary status. That longevity is very hard to come by. Indeed. And you definitely, definitely cemented that. Is there anything that you wish you knew earlier on in your career that you know now that you've picked up along the way? Oh, man. So many things. So many things. One thing in particular is that opinions are not important. Imp opinions are not special. Every person on the planet has an opinion. So why would I let anyone else's opinion be more important than my own? When we all have one. Everybody has one. And not there's not one that's more important than another. I used to get so mad when I would like read negative stuff uh in blogs or you know or on Twitter or X or whatever the hell it's called now. And and, and uh, just social media period. It's like I, I remember I remember the day that I stopped doing that. I was um I, I was, it was somebody that was talking crazy about uh, my wife or my girlfriend or whoever it was at the time. And uh, I was, I was, I used to be king clapback. Like, whatever they said, <laughs> I, I have to clap back. Well, what, what, I have to say something back. So my manager hit me one day and he's like, yo, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm defending my woman. He's like, defending her from who? You don't know these people. They don't know you. They don't know her. What, did somebody like come to your house? No. Okay, then what, who, what are you defending her from? You gonna stop people? From, you feel like you responding is gonna stop them from talking or gonna keep it going? You add fuel to this fire. The more you, the more attention you give it, the more attention, the more it happens. Neo, you obviously are here in the UK now. You're coming back for your tour. And we mm -hmm. love having you here. Like you said, your UK fans ride for you. What is your favorite thing about visiting the UK when you are here? Um, I like to just walk around and listen to people talk. 
I love I love the accent. I love the different like this this side of London has a different accent than that side of London. I just yeah. I love to just sit and lock it all in, and I and I try to do it. It's not I'm not very, it's not very good, but uh, but I always <laughs> right, go on. Let's hear it. Go on. Okay, what should what should I say? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Oh. Name's Neo. Pleasure to meet you. So nice. That's not, that's, that's Someone give this a man a role cockney. in James Sir? Bond. Sir? <laughs> David Bridgerton. Also Perhaps EastEnders. Bridgerton. Also like it was like a mesh of like many different parts of the UK. I, t- I, I, I know there's a few different ones. Yeah. I can't I just mush them all together. Yeah. yeah. You must have heard yeah. the accents on Love Island. Uh, yeah. Island. Yeah, what did you think? That was so weird. <laughs> it really, no, 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 no disrespect to the show, but I, I didn't know that I was performing for like six people. Or like, <laughs> like I got to say, hey, what's going on? <laughs> the six of you. All oh. right, well, music, let's get it. It was, it was, it was literally six people like, woo! It's like, cricket, cricket, okay. <laughs> This is this is fun. This is. Did you enjoy that going. experience? I did. I did. And then and then they played it to where I don't, did you, you saw the show? Yeah. So they played it to where I I did the show and then I brought all the girls with me and the, the guys was mad They're like Neil took our women <laughs> like no no it's not like they came home with me bro like <laughs> calm down but no it was fun it was a lot of fun it's a lot of fun really weird but a lot of fun the rumor is oh here classic we Classic song now it's a good rumor okay okay cool so cool. sick was written. In three minutes. Yes, that is not a rumor. That is true. But I'm think the song is longer than three minutes. True. So how'd you do it? In yeah, three we, need, we need a breakdown. We need a breakdown. Okay. Um. So, so sick is one of the first songs that I did with Stargate. Shout out to Stargate, the uh, production team that I've worked with pretty much my entire career. Two very tall, lanky Norwegian men. <laughs> yes, they're my Norwegian brothers. My brothers from Norwegian mothers is what nice. I call them. Uh, I remember the first day I met them, this was Sony Studios in New York. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I walked out of the bathroom, and their manager met me coming out of the bathroom. He's like, hey, I got these producers that I would love for you to meet. We're in the room over here. If you get a second, all right, cool. So I walk in the room. Mind you, I'm putting together a quote-unquote R&B album. So I walk in the room, and I see these two lanky white dudes, and I'm like, we're, we're going to do our R&B <laughs> right now? <laughs> oh, all right, all right, I guess just play me some music. Mm-hmm. The first track they played me, was the track to So Sick. The very first track they played. Doom, 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 doom. I let it play for like three seconds. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Run it back. Doom, 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 doom. I instantly started writing. Got in, knocked it out. Done deal. This is one of the first times in my career that everybody, everybody around was on the same page. Like, yeah, that's one. That's one. It doesn't happen like that all the time. Like my, so, so in in regard to picking songs and whatnot, it's not a dictatorship. Okay, it's, I put it to a vote with people whose opinions I, I respect and appreciate. And you know, sometimes the songs I like might not make might not make the cut. It got it didn't make the vote. This is one of the only times. It's only happened in my career three times in twenty years. Three times wow. that everybody was like, yeah, that one, that one, yeah, that was that was one of those moments. And I think that the song was written so fast because it was a song that I had been trying to write for a long time and I just needed the right the right uh canvas I guess for it and the second I heard that track it was like this is this is what I was looking for now Nia we couldn't get you in the building without me asking you a question that has been on my mind for years for years um the Miss Independent video yes. I watched that on repeat when mm-hmm. I was like how old was I like seven I don't know I was a baby <laughs> and I was like I want to be all of them when I grew up you had in the video Lauren London mm-hmm. uh Carrie Hilson Gabrielle Union all great women, all yes. Miss Independence. How did you get all of them to be in the video to agree? How did those conversations come about? Um. Well, I I, I will I have to admit that co- those conversations did not have much to do with me at all. Uh, it was very much uh, casting director and, and favorites called in. But honestly, everybody told me that they they just all listened to the song one time and was like, "Yes, I'm in." Perfect. Because I mean, the song speaks speaks to the kind of woman that most women wanted to be at that time or want to be now is it's that's just kind of what that song is so they they were all for something that was representing uh female empowerment and you know just a woman being a boss 
that's that's what the song is about. And yeah, they were all for it. And but I was I, I was grateful for it. I, I showed up to the video like, oh, she's here. Oh, <laughs> she's here. Oh, she's here. Well, how, how did this happen? It was it was one of those oh, moments. For yeah. me, where's the love gone in the R and B? What's happened? Like, where that's a great continue? question. That is a great question, and it's a question that I've been being asked a lot as of late. And I'm going to answer it the same way that I've been answering it because it's a great answer if I do say so myself. Okay, so. Do you remember when hip-hop became the biggest form of music in the world? Do you recall when that happened? So when that happened, all other genres of music got like a hip-hop makeover, right? There was hip-hop country records now, mm-hmm. right? You, you, you've heard this. You've heard this this, this, this ma- mashup of hip-hop and this, hip-hop and that. Like hip-hop kind of took over everything, including R&B. So I grew up with Boys to Men, with Joe to See. Uh, a, little, a little sooner, even Drew Hill. You know, I grew up with R&B cats that, w- and it was when it was cool to be an R&B cat. Nowadays, you got cats growing up with rappers. Rappers are now some of the biggest celebrities in music. So even the singers are growing up looking up to rappers. And in the world of hip hop, vulnerability is not a good thing. Vulnerability is is the the opposite of hip hop to a degree. You know, everybody got to be cool, everybody got to be tough, and that's kind of what happened to R&B. It's like it got a hip hop makeover and it just got real tough all of a sudden. Now it's it's not it's, all of a sudden it's not cool to express how much you love your woman. It's cooler to call her the B word. And it, it, that's that's what it is now. Mm-hmm. Um now as a lover of music, I can't I can't I have to appreciate all of the evolutions of music. But at the same time, I definitely feel like one of the things that is missing in today's R&B is that vulnerability, is that that uh, that baby, baby, please, if, if I do say so myself. That's that's what it used to be. It was mm-hmm. cool for a man to beg and plead and, 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 and cry. That was all right back then. Mm-hmm. You know, I recall a time where if you was rolling down the street real slow in a really nice car, Bumping R and B, you was that dude. Like that was all of my uncles. That's how. That's what I grew up with. You know what I mean. And now, now it's a different thing. And and again, I, I won't say that that there's anything so much wrong with the R and B of today because it's definitely some cats making some some great moves in R and B. However, that vulnerability, that 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 uh, that ability to show something other than I'm the coolest guy in the room, I'm the toughest guy in the room. That's not always true, bro. Like mm-hmm. and it's okay for that to not always be true. And R and B of the R and B of the say from the nineties to like early two thousands, that's what that whole era was about. Like you were cool if you were expressing emotion. You know, and I feel I feel like if we could get back to a little bit of that, R and B would definitely soar like it once did. Right now, it's sixty seconds with Neo. We do this with everyone. We want to put seconds. Uh, six seconds on the clock okay. and ask you as many questions as we possibly can and get to know you a little bit better. Copy that. Are you ready? You talk really fast. Let's I know. go. <laughs> sixty seconds with Neo. Let's go. Uh, if you didn't do what you do now, what job would you have? Probably McDonald's. Nice. What's didn't give myself fir- a plan B. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> What's the best first date idea? Damn, I don't know now. Did you see that list that came out? I have no idea where to take a woman for a first date now. Okay, it's been 18 years since you released So Sick. What does your I'll... answering machi- machine say now? I don't have an answering machine anymore. <laughs> What I would it say if you had one? What would it say? Hey, what's going on? You know who you reached. Hang up. You know what to do. <laughs> Click. Have you ever written a rap lyric? There's a song on my album, uh, 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 Nonfiction, where, and I actually rap on a song. It's, it's, called, uh, it's called, damn, what's the name of that song? It's called. Um, it's called. I'm hood though, and it's and it's me talking to a girl that was uh, this this chick that was kind of ghetto, and she's like, Neo, you don't want me. I'm I'm, bad. I'm 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 real ghetto. You don't want me. I'll ruin your image. And it was. I had to write a song about it. Uh, who would play you in a movie of your life? Who's who's a ha- who's a handsome black actor right now? Denzel. He would play me. Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one. There you go. Who is the funniest comedian of all time? Dave Chappelle. Six seconds with Neo. Okay, Neo, we've heard that you have over 12,000 hats. That's is a that lie. Is that correct? <laughs> it's a lie. That is a lie. Who lied, who, who lied to us and told us that? Uh, apparently someone who is misinformed. I have 20,000 hats. Oh, oh, what the... Jesus. Oh, my God. All right. Yeah. It's perfect. We want to have hats. some fun with you this morning, okay? We're going to blindfold Robert Bruce, and we're going to hover a few different hats over his head. Oh, wow. You've just got to describe the hat without saying what it is and try and get Robert to guess correctly which hat it is. Starting with hat number one. Neo, describe this hat. Uh, It's it's furry, 
Um, if you were to go fishing, you might wear this. Maybe not this one because it's furry, but it's that hat. Is it Eskimo hat? No. No. <laughs> um, if, you were, hat. if you were to go fishing, fishing, you might wear a this fisherman's hat. Fisherman's hat. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Correct. Okay. Well done, <laughs> fisherman hat. hat. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. Sorry. <laughs> fishing. <laughs> fishing. <laughs> hat number two. Neo, describe this hat. If you drove trucks, you would wear this hat. <laughs> if I drove trucks, I would wear this hat. Um, if you drove trucks, you would a, wear this cap. Yes. A hard hat. Yellow one. Hard no. hat. Construction. <laughs> no. <laughs> If you drove the the big trucks across country, you would wear this hat. I feel like he's saying break, a, break, truck, a truck is hot. Thank you. Damn. Okay, 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 okay. Cool, cool, cool. He's saying the name. Come right. on. Yeah. And hat number three. Describe this hat, Neo. Oh wow. Um. Ooh. Uh. Okay. Uh. It is a French hat. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, I know the name yeah, of this. It, you know it, Robert. You know I know it. the name of this. You know it. Yeah. It's given Emily in Paris. Hold on. Prince did a song. Barry! Uh, thank you. Yes. Come on, yes. come on. All Keep right, the hats rolling. One final <laughs> hat. Neo, describe this hat. Damn. Um. <laughs> okay, Uh. if uh, it looks like a hat that would be worn somewhere in the regions of Mexico. Uh, um, a su- a su- come on. Uh, a symbol. So what's that hat called? Oh, come on. You're there. You're right oh, no, there. Me- <laughs> I- Mexico. Mexico. Give him more. Give him more. Ding, 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 he got it. He just got to <laughs> think of the word. <laughs> what's the word, man? A sombrero. Sombrero. There we go. There we go. Good job. Yes. 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 A sombrero. Out. Yes. <laughs> With the hats. You did pretty well, Robert. You did okay, really good, good Neo. Nice. That yeah, was nice. Good. yeah I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm we with we that. pulled some teeth on a couple. But we got there in the there. end. Uh, Neo, we cannot wait for you to come back to the UK on tour for us. Champagne and Roses with Mario Star. Yes, indeed. March of next year, 2024, in Manchester. You're also going to Leeds, Cardiff, Newcastle, Birmingham, and of course, London's O2 yes, Arena. Indeed. Yes, it's going to be a great time. Again, every time I come here, I get so much love, man. I love coming here. Thank you all for rocking with me as long as you have. You mentioned 18 years. I've been here damn near 20 years, y'all. 20 years. Yes. I, I, and, and that is only possible because of y'all. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. And I will see y'all on the tour. Wicked. One last time. Let's hear it in the studio, everybody. It's Neo, everybody! Yeah! Woo!